Good morning, everybody. Another lovely day in paradise. Some pigeons met their demise in my barn, I found out this morning. Oh, let's just let you pass. So I've got a pile of feathers to sweep up. Not much left of the pigeon. Mind you. If you live in the country, you'll know there's no shortage of pigeons. So I'm not overly concerned. Oh, listen to that, it's squeaky. Windscreen washer. I'll have to have a look at that, perhaps that's worn out. That sounds like a metal grating on glass. Anyway, how are you? Hope you're well. I'm a year older now. <laughs> Boo hoo. Farmers are out in the fields, planting the crops. Sounded a bit like Neil out of the young ones. Anyway, I've got nothing to talk to you about today, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Seriously, nothing, nothing. Nada, nilch, niet. Well, niet is no, isn't it? <sighs> My lab is going well. I've uh, had the technician in, he's sort of uh, had a quick at my first setup, said it was not bad, which I think, considering I did my last setup in 1978, it's a bloody miracle. So, uh, yeah, so that's gone off to the uh, private denture lab for finishing because there's not much I could do, you know. It's, uh, as I say, I've got this big delay. Uh, sending stuff to the lab and back, so I can't, I can't do it for every single stage. We couldn't like do primary impressions and then send it off and and get bio blocks and special trays back. So we're having to cast the models up and do um, special trays and bio blocks in in surgery, which is you know as I say that's the basic stuff, isn't it? It's probably the stuff that might even be subcontracted to a beginner in a lab anyway. I don't know, what are they doing here? I don't, don't even know what they're doing here. <coughs> Mrs. Angry says that uh, there are lots of electric vehicles on the roads these days, but to be honest with you, I haven't got a slightest idea. That one's a HSE 6 something or other, I don't know, can't read it. But it doesn't have an exhaust pipe, so that leads me to be so let me just get a bit closer. It's an HSE SD6, which you would normally you would expect that to be a diesel, but it doesn't. So it's got a wonky number plate, hasn't it? And the just disposition to park in really awkward places. Yeah, so, Archbishop of Canterbury, who was going on about the moral rights of uh, illegal immigrants the other day, has just been prosecuted for driving at 26 in a 20 mile an hour limit. Which, you know, I mean, if he'd been driving up to 25, apparently, he would have been left off, but let off, but he's been stuck on for doing 26. So there's your moral, there's your moral authority there. You know, obey the law, not do, do as I say, not do as I do. <coughs> it's uh, one of uh, a long line of uh, people who've been exposed as a bit hypocritical in terms of their observance of uh, the uh, values which they espouse, whether it be democratic, moral, 
family, etc., etc. Must cut the grass. May is, is all about cutting the grass. That's all it is, cutting the grass. Perhaps I'll do it this afternoon. Trouble is, I do it on a tractor, and if I try and do it too fast, the tractor can do it, but I get backache from all the bouncing up and down. So perhaps I'm gonna to have to do it a bit more slowly. So, we've had a few, uh, you know, we're upgrading things all the time. With, with, with special trays, we've been making special trays with, in the old days we used to use the uh, mix the monomer and the powder and get a special tray that's set hard and uh, tray, uh, trim that up and then out comes the light cured material which is like some sort of composite material and you put it under a strong light and it sets hard and uh, and that's good but as I said it's a bit greasy and it's still quite difficult to you know you have to do all the moulding and then We've got this machine, 3,000 pound suck down machine, which also does special trays. So I've bought some special tray blanks and we're gonna do some special trays. And then uh, you, need, you need to trim them up and so you need a thing called a tri-cutter, which is a sort of a straight handpiece bar that's just a triangle in cross section and it, uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, cut cut through the trays without making too much mess, and then obviously you need to polish them up. So you need a thing which is like a circular little little tiny little circular piece of sandpaper which fits in the drill, and so you can sand the edges. But I'm figuring if we can get that going, then we'll be able to make special trays very quickly. You know, almost as fast as you can cast the plaster up. Timings are. From impression to plaster cast is about 30 minutes and you have to time that because it's tempting to take it off earlier than that um, and the reason why you shouldn't take it off any earlier than that is because there's a sweet spot the plaster hardens up so so the hardness of the plaster goes up like this and as that's hardening the uh, alginate is losing its flexibility so the flexibility of the plaster goes down like that and then there's a spot at which the two cross over in the middle uh, which is the area of the hardest plaster relative to the softest alginate and that's the time at which you need to get the plaster cast off you know the, the, the cast off the plaster and and that's why you can't for example cast something up really and leave it overnight uh, because what will happen in the morning, you'll come in and the um, alginate will be rock hard. I mean the plaster will be rock hard, but the alginate will be rock hard as well. So you almost certainly you'll damage the, uh, damage the cast. The bloke behind me is following very close. Like literally there's about six feet between me and him. I dare say it's a young driver. Lucky he's not driving in America because in America they just land the brakes on and he'd go straight into the back of the car. Trouble is, if I did that, that of course, anything more than about 20 pounds worth of damage to this car, it'd be a write off. <laughs> uh. Right. not let the clutch up before we've got the car in gear yeah so where was I yeah so um, about 30 minutes and what, what happens is the glass is pretty hard by then but um, 
and by which I mean sort of plaster stone mix or stone uh, dye mix. I used um, I bought some dye stone because uh, I wanted the hardest stuff possible, and uh, so that takes a little bit more um, time to set. I, I should use yellow kaffir stone, which I will do, but you know, it's a case of you only run out of these things slowly. So you've got 30 minutes really before you uh, could get, get the uh, alginate off. And then if the alginate is, um, if the impression has got a lot of freestanding low incisors, which are going to snap off. Then what I do, that's left him in the dust. What I do is um, cut the tray off. And the way that you cut the tray off is you make a, a like a square cut. So I suppose the tray's a horseshoe shape, isn't it? And in the middle of the horseshoe, you make a square. Here we go, look, I'll show you, look. I don't know if you can see out the back there. He's, uh, he's the car with the lights on and he's coming after me but someone else has got in his way so that's all right oh dear me trials and tribulations of just driving to work i said to mrs angry this morning these drivers on this driver nutcase they're all they're all young people trying to assert their right to pass on their genes by proving that they're competitive, you know, that they're they're trying to climb to the top of the pile. They're trying to get a competitive advantage over everybody all the time. Which is fine, you know, I mean, when you've got to my age and you've achieved what I have, that competitive image has been satiated. You've done it, you know, you've, you've had children, your children have had children. You're financially secure. You don't need to... Uh, you know, for you to have something doesn't involve you thinking you've got to take it off of someone else. So, but you know, not the younger generation. See, there's another one of them there, off he goes. Thinking that uh, getting somewhere 1% faster will, will I, you know, early bird and all that. I suppose Darwin would teach us that being 1% earlier than everyone else does does give you a competitive advantage. So I can't blame them really. But um, I just don't want to get involved in that. I'm not I'm not running that race anymore, do you know what I mean? No, police car. Police car, half a mile in the rearview mirror. Let's see what he's after doing. A uh, car behind me has not seen police car and he's overtaking. Unless he's being chased. He's certainly being flashed. And there he goes, GN70 DSZ. This is my Honda VFR training. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ride a Honda VFR without being able to spot a police car half a mile behind you. <laughs> oh dear. I got stopped by the police once for speeding on the Honda. I was going into London and I was uh, pushing it a bit. And uh, I saw this police car coming up behind me. Now I think I was doing, I don't know, I must have been doing 100. And to catch up with me, he must have been doing 120. And I saw him from miles away. And by the time, uh, by the time he caught me, I was right down in the traffic, you know, doing 55 or whatever. And so they pulled me over and, uh, you know, and they did this. And I just read uh, Desmond Morris's man watching which is all about uh, how we're really monkeys and we've, we, we use all the monkey signals. And so uh, I not really got, had a very good idea of uh, 
how to de-escalate a situation like that. By, by, uh, and Morris always said that you can't be aggressive to a baby if a baby is so defenseless. You know, it's all very well saying, yes, you can attack someone who's, whose defenses are weaker than yours, but when, when they are so weak as to be completely defenseless, it's very difficult to use aggression against uh, uh, someone who's, who's completely defenseless. And so in that respect, your weakness is your defense. You know, your, your, the weaker you are, the stronger you are, in other words. And the way you do that is that you give all the monkey signs about, uh, the monkey signs of deference, you know, looking at the floor, you know, rubbing your ears, and, you know, your hair and stuff like that, and showing all these monkey, monkey deference signs. And so I did that, I took my helmet off, I met them halfway between the bike and the police car, neutral, neutral territory, said I was really sorry and, you know, I might have, I might have just gone over the speed limit a little bit, but it's a new bike and I've never done it before and I was just carried away by the, you know, the fact that I had a bit of clear road and, and I won't do it again and they were like, well, you know, well, don't let us see you doing it again around here sort of thing and they just let me go. Which, I mean, with hindsight, I think I put down to the fact that they didn't really have a decent uh, recording of me speeding. I think they saw me go fast, and then they flit off after me, but, but they didn't really, they weren't really behind me recording my speed when I was going fast. And so as a result, um, I don't think they really had anything anyway. So I think that's probably more likely why they just gave me a warning. But... Uh, but anyway, that's the only time I've ever got to got to stop for speeding on a bike. But as I say, but I saw them half a mile away, <laughs> and they didn't even have lights on. Hello, here comes something else. Ambulance. So the reason why I knew it was a police car was because. Um, it was during the day and they were driving along with the headlights on. I mean, in those days, it was quite unusual for cars to drive along with the headlights on. You, 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 your basic Volvo was your only car that had headlights on in those days. Nowadays, everybody's got their headlights on all the time. But uh, yeah, so they had like full headlights on and and, uh, and I could see they were going faster than the rest of the traffic. And I thought, hello, there's a car half a mile behind me, full headlights on, going faster than the rest of the traffic. I wonder if by any chance that could be a police vehicle. <laughs> and sure enough it was. But, um, you know, close but no cigar. That's my only comment on that. So, oh dear. Yeah, so in the middle of this horseshoe, you cut out a square. Yeah? So basically, you're cutting inside the incisors and then down the two sides of the pallet. And if you do it, if you do it with a disc and you do it like carefully, you should be able to tell when you're just through the tray. And you should still by then be in the alginate and not really scoring great grooves in the mould in the cast so um, then you pull that square out and then that really then gives you enough leverage to sort of lever the two halves of the tray apart and, and crack it all off and then obviously you then have to get the alginate off without cracking the teeth off and uh, that's really done with a some sort of Mitchell's trimmer or whatever just just doing it a bit at a time you know you just have to be careful it's nice to look at a cast where the teeth have um, not been knocked off. Uh, the actual, the, the prevailing way of doing it in labs is literally just to pull it off, pull the teeth off, get the teeth out of the mould, get your super glue out, stick it back on. That's how it's all done. But it's nice when you you know you you can do it without doing that. And that's the difference between like your master, your grandmaster, and your international master. So, here we go. Let's go through. Keep the slot waiting. That's it. Thank you. 
they made that one way valve that bit of road it lets cars this way and not that way I think it's designed obviously to reduce the amount of traffic that's in that area so half an hour to pull the cast up and then uh, you know possibly another half an hour to block it lay down and put a layer of wax on some blocking uh, compound on and uh, get your get your special tray sucked down over the top trim it up and and uh, sandpaper the edges big problem with these thermo formed special trays is the handle you can't really form a handle in the same way as uh, as uh, you would on a cold cure tray or a kit like your tray because um, you have to have like special handles that, that will fit on. Excavator there, flattening the ground, doing the same work as two men on a, on a rake at enormous cost. So I'll see that number plate. That's one of those lorries that goes around picking up scrap metal in there. On anything that's not nailed down. Yeah, so the teeth we get from Shotlander, Enigma Life. They're about uh, 20, 30 pounds for uh, posteriors and a bit more for the anteriors. Um, our technician's given us a ton of teeth that he hasn't used, but they're mostly upper eights. So to be honest with you, they're not really much use. Uh, we'll, uh, well, probably, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a case of sorting everything out, you know. He's given us a few roach clasps and, and stuff like that. I don't personally, I mean, you know, we've always had the roach clasps added on at the trying stage. But I'm coming round to the idea that it might not be a bad idea just to put them on before you process the teeth, you know. I don't see the, uh, the advantage of trying in a denture with roach clasps on or whatever clasps on I mean you're not really gonna I mean okay you've got the advantage of having a quick look and seeing what they look like but you know showing the patient what they'll look like but um, But they don't really contribute much to the retention in a wax trying, and uh, not you know you haven't really got much retention in a wax trying anyway. So and they're a bit of a pain in the doodah, you know, to put on and then there's all the chance of them getting damaged when you try the thing in. And so I might ask for wax for, for the uh, roach class to be added on post trying and then at the end of the day you know you could just take them off I mean really what are you looking at probably I don't know tenner I don't know for a roach class if it works great if it doesn't then you just snip it off you know anyway the CCTV thing was resolved when the um, tenant uh, agreed to take it down. I mean, there was a bit more BS surrounding it than that. You know, he said that he'd never did this and the battery had run out and they'd never... And it turned out he'd lost the contract for the data protection anyway, so he, he just said, I don't care, I'll just take it down. So, but it should never have been put up. I had a quick look and really, you need the permission of all the tenants if you're going to monitor the space internally and they don't, you know, that, that one tenant would never get that so 
the centre will, will get that, but the, um, the an individual tenant would never get the permission of all the tenants. So. Anyway, so it's all finished, but you know, once again, I've established a reputation as an uh, awkward bastard of the of the of the centre. So that's fine. I don't mind. I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.